The Nikki Burns Show with Jenny Green. The Nikki Burns Show with Jenny Green. Yeah. 2FM. Now, Jenny, a wise man once said that life is like a box of chocolates. You remember that? You just never know what you're going to get. Uh, in some ways, it's a bit like that buying a second hand car. Uh, but buying a used model doesn't have to be as fraud as an experience as you might expect. Whether you're a college student starting a new job or a first time buyer, we have got you covered today because Shane O'Donoghue from CompleteCar.ie joins us now to give us advice on how to make the right decision when buying a second hand car. Shane, uh, apologies, I did say you were a mechanic earlier on. You're not a mechanic, <laughs> but you do know loads of mechanics. <laughs> I know plenty. Yeah. Uh, so, and um, we've had loads of texts from India, and we encourage people to get involved as well. Uh, but before we get uh, into your tips, is buying a second hand car a bit, a bit of a lottery? I guess it is, being honest. Okay. People don't have to worry about it. You know, we need to drive cars. There's as many good ones as there are bad ones. And some of the advice we're going to go through today will probably help people, steer people towards the good ones. Um, I mean, starting off, first off, the first thing with a car you're near to buying a used car is get a car history check. Um, some good companies like Cartel.ie out there, um, you know, they give you the history of it, tell you whether it is finance outstanding, tell you if it's been written off, um, things like how many you, how many owners there are. Very, very good. What, what's that website? Cartel.ie. Cartel. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so you you are kind of taking a chance then. You are for sure. I mean, this people are afraid of it. Certainly, first time buyers. You know, younger people not used to buying cars. Um, use c- cars are complicated pieces of machinery. There's lots of bits and pieces that can go wrong. But we only hear horror stories, don't we? We don't hear people raving about. Um, oh, I've had such and such a car for five years. I'm going to get another one. Yeah. Just don't hear that because people don't talk about that. It's like restaurants. You don't, you know. Supposedly, we tell mm. ten people if we've had a bad experience. It's the bad story. Yeah, yeah, we tell one if we have a good one. If you were walking into that car courtyard or, or car park outside right now to look for a car for yourself or for you know your family, what's the very first thing you're looking at? Um, I, I guess reli- reliability. It has to be if you're sensible. Certainly, if you're talking about family or something, if you're commuting, if you need it day to day, reliability has to be your top. Uh, top, top thing you're looking for I mean everybody likes to have something that has it reflects their own image mm. yeah. um, people like brands like the look of things so that's tempting but reliability is so important when you're buying and what car. about buying uh, privately as opposed to buying and we're talking about second hand cars here buying privately instead of buying in an actual uh, garage is there it, you, you get it you can save a bit more buying a privately but you're really taking way more risks surely if you do that yeah absolutely the, the biggest pro of buying privately is that you, you there are big savings to be mm. made but but you you know what you're getting in the dealer you're paying for um there you're going to get a warranty you're nearly always going to get a warranty and with a dealer of some description you won't ever with a private seller uh, then there's the safety and security, your personal safety in terms of, you know, going out and seeing a car. Mm. You don't know who you're going to. OK, you could go to a friend, go to somebody. That's OK. Um, you, you have to get their identity. You don't know who they are again. Is that actually their house? You know, is that their Could car? they be selling a stolen car? They could or be selling a stolen car, absolutely. And then things like transferring funds. You know, everybody feel a bit more secure transferring uh, a big lo- load of money to mm. an established company that they've passed every year. And I think the other thing that people need to be aware of as well, because we have a fear of buying privately, but yet if we go into a garage, any garage, and it may not be a very reputable one, we presume that it's kind of okay because of the garage. And I know, and I'm not going to go into any detail, but it has happened to me before where it was not a reputable garage. Uh, You think that you're fine. You think that your warranty is fine. Your warranty, it turns out, means absolutely nothing. And what you've been sold is is not what you were told you've been sold and you very little come back at that point so i think that's something that i think a lot of some garages are it's simi isn't it yeah so SIMI. They're, they, they're so they're affiliated with simi some of so them, they yeah. make sure that that is up on the garage before you go in and part with any of your money because i do think it's something that a lot of people aren't aware of yeah good point really i mean that alone w- won't be a protection either i think it's a good idea doing a bit of research these days with the internet mm. somebody somewhere will have mentioned a uh, business if they've had a, a bad experience mm. with them so it's a good idea to do a bit of a search on the on the name of the dealership and the name of the business um, and everything we said earlier about go- looking into car history check and all that that still applies to buying from a dealership you know more than anything mm. a dealer isn't n- won't necessarily do all those checks themselves mm. Um, so you know you s- it's still on you to do those checks you just have to go in with your eyes open really and there's no just things too many checks well a car history check online will that tell you everything will that tell you if it's ever been even a little bit of a, a little tip a little smack a li- on the side type of thing no it probably won't tell you any of that uh, it, it write-offs if it's any any kind of category of write-off finance outstanding is a big one of course because if you buy a car that has this finance outstanding on it yeah um, it's technically it wasn't the sellers to sell and yeah. it's technically not yours that the finance house could actually come and just take it away from you and even though it's not your fault and you've no comeback yeah so that's quite a big one 
the finance I stand. There's a couple of questions coming in. We'll get into them now. Uh, please ask Shane, how much mileage on a used car is too much? Because this is quite a good one because it depends on the car and it depends what's being done to it, whether it will go another, you know, 100,000 or not. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not a black and white answer to that. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I think 300,000 kilometres is a huge amount. I think you do want to be getting a car ridiculously cheap for that. But say, say a car that's on 100,000 kilometres, th- that should be perfectly fine. But more important is the service history. Um, and especially with uh, premium brands, but I would say all cars really. If the service history is probably more important than the condition of the car than the actual mileage. So if you're buying a car with 200,000 kilometres and it's had really good service history all the way through with a dealership, I'd be pretty confident it would go further again. Um, diesels are designed to be driven, you know, longer mileages all the time. So high mileage diesels, you wouldn't worry too much mm. about. A really low mileage, older diesel, I'd be a bit more worried about, actually. Then people also say, and I don't know if this is true or not, maybe you can correct me, that if you're not doing a huge amount of mileage, you shouldn't buy a diesel car. Oh, because 100%. it doesn't run, as it, it won't it won't run as well yeah well it, it w- isn't so much it won't run as well mm. it just maintenance will cost you more right um they've uh, all modern diesels have a, a filter in the exhaust for instance that clogs up if mm-hmm. it isn't used on uh, higher at higher speeds regularly and high longer mileages and there's other, loads of other bits in the engine because at the moment right. nowadays the way prices of, of petrol and diesel have gone people are going and get a diesel car because it's a bit cheaper but obviously if you're not if you're just kind of if you need a little run around to go to the shops and go into work which isn't very far then probably diesel is not the way to go but yeah 100 percent. there's there's n- this it's definite it's not even maybe it's definite oh, okay. now um uh, what we always say to readers is uh, anything less if you do less than twenty thousand ish kilometers a year and most of it isn't on motorways then don't go diesel because it'll end up costing you more even though the fuel is cheaper even though the economy is better in diesels um there's a bit it's a big thing that people don't quite understand mm. we were all kind of pushed into diesels when the 2008 tax laws changed for uh, emissions ba- they were became emissions based and everybody went, to, everybody went for diesel because you get a cheaper tax, you get better fuel economy and everything. And now slowly people are realizing that, you know, actually it's not economically viable yeah. because you're paying, paying thousands more. on. What are we like, the human race? Can you change our mind, don't we? <laughs> I know. It's like, it's not, <laughs> wine isn't good for you next week. Actually, yeah, it's great for you. Actually, chocolate's great. No, don't <laughs> eat chocolate. Uh, a couple of tips you have down here. Be careful when you test drive. So what do you, what, what do you want yeah, to say? I think a lot of people, it's, it's such a strange experience. You go into a showroom or you go turn up somebody's house to test drive and you kind of, it's all new and you're wondering what to do. But you just really need to keep an eye on what's going on. I mean, first thing, try not to test drive a car at all at night or when it's been raining because you won't see the paintwork. You, you know, you can't see if there's something wrong. There could be a big dent in the back. Actually, it's very hard to see when the car is wet or when, it, when it's dark. So those are quite, quite a simple thing for anybody to uh, go along with. Um, if possible, ask the seller, can the car be completely cold when you start it up? Because if there's something wrong with a car engine, it's most likely to show it when it starts up in terms of you know, blue smoke or black smoke or white smoke coming out the back. And anybody can look for that. You don't have New to be a mechanic. <laughs> the other advice I, smoke, I, I would like to give is actually do take it for a test drive now luckily it paid off but I bought a car years ago that I walked into a garage fell in love with and I said I'll take it I, and I picked it up two days later didn't even get into it now luckily it was fine yeah. but don't Jeez, I, it was a bit, and not only that when I picked it up I said to your man afterwards I'd already paid for it I said Where's the bit of a blonde moment? Where's the boot? He was like, there, there isn't one. I went, grand. That's You're not fine. unusual. You, you'd I didn't be surprised even know. many people. <laughs> yeah, you'd be shocked how many people decide on, you know, the, yeah. as I said earlier, brand. They like yeah. the brand, they like the budget. That's yeah. it. I'm buying or that. aesthetically, it looks great. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a long time um, ago. I've learned. Look I've grown up. Look out for the unusual. Yeah, I mean, as I was saying, very, most people don't know much about cars. It, it, that's a fact. So just look out for what's unusual. You don't need to be a mechanic to hear an odd noise or notice that you're going along a straight road, but actually the car's kind of pulling a bit to the left or that mm. there's a weird colour smoke coming out the back. So that's a, that's a big thing, really. Okay. Just look out for what's unusual. Um, I mean, going along with that is uh, try and drive many different versions of the same car. So, okay, you've seen an ad and you think, yeah, that's perfect. That's the color I want, the money, that's the car, everything. Mm. What you actually do is, say it's Volkswagen Golf, go and try, try two or three other Volkswagen Golfs on sale, similar spec, that you're not going to, even if you're not going to buy them, because yeah. you get a feel for what's right and what's wrong. You'll very quickly pick up, you know, which what is a good one, what isn't. Okay, well, look, stay with us there for a moment, Shane. Uh, as more questions keep coming in, if you've anything you want to ask today, 51552. Turn it off. The Nikki Byrne Show with Jenny Green. Weekdays from 10. Hey, two.
<laughs> Petroleum buying a second hand car, what to look out for and stuff. Uh, Shane O'Donoghue is in with us. Uh, Shane, loads of text coming into us. Uh, probably won't get through them all, but we'll do our best. Someone says, once you, and you can, you can you know, kind of confirm or deny, once you throw the holy water on the car, when you get home, with any second hand car, you'll be grand. Was that true or false, Shane? Yeah, it's a well known scientific <laughs> fact. <laughs> Uh, there's another one saying uh, funny thing is I'd still do it anyway just in case <laughs> and it's like I always remember anytime you got a new car like your granny would give you a little medal to keep it and they, you know put that yeah, in the box I have one of them as well. yeah, of course. Uh, another one says uh, do white cars have less coats of paint and should that make them cheaper what Oh, yeah. It's a new, a new one, one on me as well wow. no <laughs> do you know I will say though because I have a white car um, and I, I could never understand someone always said to me they're, very, they're much easier to keep clean and I never believed that but they are I, I you can't just don't see the dirt do it you? just <laughs> never seems to get as dirty as a black car or a silver car uh, it anyway. probably is as dirty it just doesn't yeah. show up oh, right, uh, okay so someone says what should you look out for if you're buying and taking a car in from the UK it's very similar really you just be a bit more careful in terms of the history check uh, the company I mentioned earlier they, their history checks cover the UK as well they have access to UK data um Obviously this is cartel. Yeah, yeah. Dolly, yeah. So, just do all that. That's probably even more important again. Because and all you, you need is the reg, is it? Yeah, all you need is the reg of the car. Okay. Um, service history again. Make sure it's been serviced. Uh, try and get somebody to look at it or get photographs, good photographs of it underneath as well as on top before you go over and you're there and you're ready to drive back in the ferry and then you realise that actually underneath it's all rusty or something. Right. So you, you probably need to just spend a bit more time with the checks and yeah. try and get more off the seller, more details. We don't really see a lot of rust anymore in cars, do we? You don't yeah. actually, no. Uh, so there's another question here. It said, I recently bought a second-hand car and there's a couple of problems with it. It's under warranty from the dealer, but what do I do about a car while it's in getting repaired? I live in the country and I'm about five miles from my nearest bus route, so I rely on my car for work and getting my daughter to crash. Is the dealer obliged to give me a replacement car until my car is ready since it's under warranty? That's from Peter and Calvin. No, it doesn't, there's no legal standing for that. I mean, some dealers will. Some dealers will just a have a car A lot of times there. your insurance company might. Would they, if, or would they, is that only if you have an accident? Yeah, I believe so with insurance that if the, okay. if the car is off the road because of some reason it's being insured for, mm. yeah. Um, but a lot of dealers will just give you some banger to have, you know, in that situation. Yeah. They will have, might give you just a banger for, to keep you going for a couple of weeks. So I think just talk to the dealer and ask them. Uh, I'm in the process of looking for a first car for my daughter. She's 19. What is a good, reliable, safe make and what size insurance... Uh, is the best thanks from a raid well with, with learning drivers uh, new drivers first thing is the engine size just as small as physically possible yeah, one litre yeah go for a one litre petrol engine um, depending on their budget I mean there's plenty of new nice new one litres around the place not very many learners getting brand new cars but mm. something like an older Micra um, Toyota Yaris we were just talking about a minute ago um a Kia Picanto, you know, there's the, there are lots of small cars, one litre, and, and they're all much of muchness in terms of safety. And what's and the everything. budget on those? What do you, what approximately? But you could spend anything. You could spend a thousand euro up to ten thousand euro. Okay. So don't skimp on the year because the newer the car, the safer it will be, I think, mm. is pretty a pretty good. Okay. And um, what else we have? Um, I have a 14 year old Mini Cooper. I, 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 we touched on this off air, but I actually didn't say it on air. Uh, with 179,000 miles on it, never been a burden on my pocket until this year, and I'm now considering changing it. What should I expect on a trade in? Uh, I was a bit surprised on the best and worst offers that I got. I know cars don't hold their value, uh, and I do know it's in its twilight years. So, a 14 year old Mini Cooper with 179,000 miles. Yeah, it's it's. I think dealers won't want it. That's the problem we discussed. Okay. That um, they they won't. They'll have trouble selling that on themselves. So they're probably going to offer really low figures, like a thousand euro or something like that, just just to take it off your hands, just to m make the other sale go through. Um, you might get a little more on private sale, um, but it won't be easy to sell. I'm afraid. Okay. Right. Uh, well, I suppose finally in this, because you know, there's a lot more questions we could probably talk all day. But what is what's your final piece of advice to remember? I suppose probably one thing is not to get, you know, not to lose the run of yourself and get caught up in the in the love of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all do it. I mean, even even I'm tr talking here sensibly with you. I do it as well. I love yeah. cars. I love something shiny and new. Mm. So, but don't be carried away with a single car specific vehicle that you've gone and tested. There will be other ones. I mean, there are so many of every vehicle out there. Um, if there's anything slightly dodgy off about it, the history, the seller or something, just walk away. There will be another one out there. Shane, what's your dream car? If if money wasn't an issue, what would what would you want in your driveway? Ah, uh, probably probably one of the latest Ferraris. It's called the four eight eight Pista. You can't go wrong. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we've won outside. Thanks for coming on the show. It's yours to take away. Thanks, Shane. Thank Cheers. you.